We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race. And the human race is filled with passion. Robin Williams is really the kind of actor that can put a smile on anybody's face, even though you might be going through a rough day. His energy and quick wit are really what made him into one of the biggest comedians of the 20th century. He had a presence on screen and off screen that transcended the medium. He is human, hopeful, zany, and sometimes a little bit crazy. A quote of his that has stayed in my mind is, I think the saddest people always try their hardest to make people happy because they know what it's like to feel absolutely worthless and they don't want anybody else to feel like that. His comedy was revolutionary, whether it was Williams portraying the alien Mork and Mork and Mindy or in more serious dramas such as Dead Poet Society, he was always able to stand out for his charisma and charm. He just had a magical touch when it came to comedy which easily transcended to all cultures around the world. With that being said, how did Robin Williams become such a comedy icon? Robin McLaurin Williams was born in Chicago, Illinois on July 21, 1951. His father, Robert Williams, was an executive in Ford's Lincoln Mercury division and his mother, Lori McLaurin, was a former model from Jackson, Mississippi. William credits his mother as an important early influence on his humor, often trying to make her laugh to gain attention. As a child, he was a shy kid who didn't overcome his shyness until he became involved with his high school drama department. In 1973, after graduating high school, he attained a full scholarship to Juilliard School in New York City. He was one of 20 students accepted in the freshman class, and he and Christopher Reeve were the only two accepted by John Houseman into the advanced program at the school that year. In 1976, Williams began performing stand-up comedy in the San Francisco Bay Area. His first performance was at the Holy City Zoo, a comedy club in San Francisco where he worked his way up from tending the bar. Williams soon moved to Los Angeles to perform in LA clubs including the Comedy Store. This is where he got his acting debut thanks to a TV producer called George Schlatter, who saw one of his performances. The show he appeared in was called Laughing and aired in late 1977. The show didn't last too long, but it did slowly transition him into an on screen career. The show that really started it all was Mork and Mindy, which ran from 1978 to 1982. It was actually a spin off show after a very successful episode of Happy Days, where Robin Williams starred as an extraterrestrial named Mork who comes to Earth from the planet Orc. This episode was a take on the 1960s sitcom My Favorite Martian. The show wanted to feature spacemen to capitalize on the popularity of the then recently released Star Wars film. When the Mork episode turned out to be so popular, the ending in the syndicated version was re-edited to show Mork erasing the experience from everyone's mind, thus meaning the event had actually happened and was not a dream. And thus the show Mork and Mindy was put into existence and tells the story of Mork who arrives on Earth in an egg-shaped spacecraft in order to observe human behavior by Orson his mostly unseen and long-suffering superior. With his success on Mork and Mindy, Williams began to reach a wider audience and was included in three HBO comedy specials throughout the late 70s and the 80s, Off the Wall, An Evening with Robin Williams, and A Night at the Met. Around the same time, he also got his first starring role in the 1980s movie entitled Popeye, based on the popular E.C. Seeger's comic character of the same name. In this movie, Williams took on the role of Popeye, where he goes on the search for his father, who abandoned him as a child. There he befriends an assortment of eccentrics and falls in love with Olive Oil, who already has a suitor, the bully Bluto. Popeye also discovers an abandoned baby, Sweet Pea, whom he raises as his own. Similarly to the cartoon, Bluto is jealous and kidnaps Olive Oil, and Popeye eats spinach in order to get stronger and fight off his mortal enemy. The film was a commercial disappointment, but it wasn't due to Williams' performance, but more so the not-so-great script. In 1982, he went on to star in another leading role in a movie entitled The World According to Garp, which Williams considered may have lacked a certain madness on screen, but it had a great core. 
This movie is actually based on a novel by Steve Tesish and tells the story of a nurse during World War II, Jenny Fields, who conceives with a dying pilot and bears a boy named T.S. Garp, played by Robin Williams, whom she raises alone. When Garp grows up, he has some success writing fiction, but not nearly so much as his mother, uh, who is writing feminist-themed nonfiction. Rich and famous, she starts a center for troubled women, and while Garp marries and has children, he remains a constant, if somewhat critical, observer of the strange community that forms around his mother. After that movie, he continued to have other smaller roles and less successful films such as The Survivors and Club Paradise. But that didn't really advance his acting career until he booked his first major breakout role in the 1987 movie Good Morning Vietnam, which earned Williams a nomination for the Academy Awards for Best Actor. In this movie, we follow the story of radio funny man Adrian Grenor, played by Robin Williams, who is sent to Vietnam to bring a little comedy back into the lives of the soldiers. After setting up shop, Cronur delights Jais but shocks his superior officer, Sergeant Major Dickerson, with his irrelevant take on the war. While Sergeant Dickerson attempts to censor Adrian's broadcasts, he pursues a relationship with a Vietnamese girl named Trin, who shows him the horrors of war firsthand. For this role, Williams was allowed to improvise most of his lines. Over the microphone, he created voice impressions of people including Walter Cronkite, Gomer Pyle, Elvis Presley, and Richard Nixon. The producer of the film, Mark Johnson, mentioned that they would just let the cameras roll and see what Robin Williams would come up with. Thanks to the overwhelming success of the movie, Robin Williams really skyrocketed as a leading man. From then on, many of Robin Williams' roles were comedies tinged with pathos, meaning that his movies may stem from comedy, but they are also meant to appeal to the emotions of the audience and elicit feelings that already reside in them. In 1989, Robin Williams played in yet another classic of that era called Dead Poet Society, which included a final emotional scene that some critics said inspired a generation and became a part of pop culture. In this movie, a new English teacher, John Keating, played by Robin Williams, is introduced to an all-boys preparatory school that is known for its ancient traditions and high standards. He uses unorthodox methods to reach out to his students who face enormous pressures from their parents and the school. With Professor Keating's help, students in his class learn to break out of their shells, pursue their dreams, and seize the day. This movie was a commercial success and received numerous nominations including Best Director, Best Picture, Best Actor for Robin Williams. It also won Best BAFTA, the Caesar for Best Foreign Film, and numerous other awards. All this to basically say that this movie was enormously successful and if people didn't know Robin Williams, after Dead Poets Society, well, once it was released, it propelled Robin Williams into the A-list category. Well, this concludes the first part on my retrospective on Robin Williams looking back at his career throughout the decades. Please be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Leave me a comment too, let me know what your favorite Robin Williams moment is. Interacting with this video really helps YouTube know to actually promote my videos and make them pop up on the YouTube search. With that being said, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.